Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. Recording late at night trying to not wake up anyone. And also a little bit tired because I went to the pre-release for Duskmorn. What are we going to be doing today? I'm not talking about Duskmorn, which is unfortunate because um, it's a really good set. But we're going to be talking about a Lost Bell 5 Atlantis campaign a slightly a day later than I wanted to put it up just because I decided at the last minute I actually did want to talk about the other servants. Originally it was just Super Ryan, but I feel like I can talk about all of them. And let's go over it. So let's start right away. First of all, there'll be two new interludes. We're going to go with the, the quest stuff, actual quest stuff, and then banner info at the end. As always, you can look at the timestamp stuff if you want to go ahead and go somewhere else. Uh, yeah, there'll be new interludes added for Super Ryan and for Jason. Jason will get an MP upgrade and Super Ryan is just getting more story stuff. So there'll be two sync courts from that. And a stronger Jason. You need to have cleared Atlantis and reached third ascension and bond level three with both of them to get that interlude unlocked. But there will also be a limited interlude quest open. So certain servants interlude quests will be available to clear even if you don't own the servants. Additionally, the following interlude quest will cost one half AP as the usual amount of AP. Uh, and this will include basically everyone that was in Atlantis, which was Super Orion, Drake, Chiron, uh, Shiome, uh, Astrea, Hector, um, Mandy Ricardo, uh, Jason, Paris, Bartholomew, and Charlotte Corday. Um, with both for the most part being like Clear Atlantis, Clear Fuyuki, Clear Fuyuki, Clear Atlantis, Clear Atlantis, Clear Okeanus, Clear Lost Belt 3 Intro, Clear Shimosa, Clear Fuyuki, uh, clear Interlude 1 in London, Clear Okeanus, and Clear Atlantis for all the way up um, Super Orion. Um, make sure to prioritize the units you don't own, starting with the 5 stars. So if you don't have Super Orion or Drake, this is a great way to just get 5 Sync Quartz. And then if you ever do pull Drake, she'll automatically have her NP upgraded. Um, and the same thing goes for the 4s. Obviously, almost everyone can have the 3s and the 1s, but you should still see them. Plus, it's always nice to get some more lore stuff or hang out with the units. Unfortunately, for some of the old ones, their stories are a little bit bad. I think, I don't remember if Hector was one of them, but um, Drake might suffer from that, unfortunately, just a little bit, depending on when hers are set. I, I'll assume the Okean, yeah, London, yeah, it'd be pretty bad. But anyway, they'll be available. Limited time campaign, two times friend, EXP, and great and super suck chance for all those servants that I just mentioned. And you'll get a 30% bond bonus as well. Um, and including those from the units not mentioned is Achilles, Odysseus, and I believe that is it. Um, because they don't have any rank ups. No, well, Achilles is about to get one, and I think Odysseus gets one later on in the future, but either way, not right now on NA. One half AP rank up quest for the following servants, which will be, yeah, Achilles, Drake, Shiome, Hector, and Bartholomew. One half campaign, one half AP for Atlantis free quest, and one half for free quest that apply for the, further, for the first three times that a free quest is cleared. From the fourth onward, the AP cost will be the regular one. I also don't remember if I actually remember to say when this starts. This starts on the September 23rd. <laughs> Sorry, I was too magic brained at the beginning to mention, but yeah, September 23rd is when this campaign starts. So, game updates Achilles gets a rank up, and so does Chiyome. With him getting a uh, rank up to his NP and her getting a rank up to um, this skill right here. Rare Prism Shop update, the Troya Hippos, gain two critical stars when attacking using the engraved card. Remove one attack buff for enemies when attacking using the engraved card. The I guess uh, Ascensions for um, Odysseus where he just puts on the helmet, you'll be able to get those. You can pay two, but if you've cleared Atlantis, they're already free. They come with your Xbox, no easy, just pick them up. <laughs> Some limited master missions, clear Atlantis prologue and you'll get three beast footprints and five of the stones that let you cheat out <laughs> hard fights, that's what I use them for, uh, free revives basically. Clear any Atlantis free quests one, two, and three times and the first time will get you Stargazer Teapot and then you'll get an HP foe and then an attack foe. Um, recollection quest as always. After you've cleared Atlantis, you'll basically be able to fight these fights again. For people like me who have already been in Atlantis, it's a way to look back. For the people who are just clearing Atlantis, it's a way to do that fight again, except for this time you can get a ticket or do a harder version of that fight for 10 uh, Stargazer Teapots. So the first one will unlock Section 11 Arrow 2, which is, 
Uh, after you cleared Atlantis, you'll get the Section 11 Arrow 2 recollection quest. You beat that, and you'll unlock the next two, which is um, these right here, which is um, the Super Brick Collection Quest version of Section 11, and then Section 17 will open. Beat Section 17, and you unlock the harder version of Section 17 and Section 23. Beat Section 23, and you'll get this. If you've already beaten it once, it should be just an easy three tickets, unless you are <laughs> far back, of course. And I don't believe these are the super annoying fights. There might be some of them in here. Because again, once we get higher to the higher Lost Belts, there are a lot of hard fights. But I don't remember if this has the harder ones. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on that. <laughs> and that's basically it. They also did say that at the end of the 30th, the Road to Lost Belt um, 7... It's not called the Road to Lost Belt 7. It's for the Road to 7, Lost Belt 5 Atlantis. We'll get an Olympus version. Basically, as soon as this one ends, which will be on the 30th. And that's easy, easy come, easy go. Uh, now we can actually talk about the summoning quest, which they actually did add an additional unit on here, which is a regular Orion. Um, originally, Orion was not on there. That's why when you look at here, Orion's not here, because this is just a copy and paste from the JP version of the um, of this event right here, of this banner. Uh, and like I said, it will start on the 23rd with Super Orion, and then on the 25th, Odysseus, and then on the 27th, it's Achilles, on the 28th, it's regular Orion, and then, yep, that's how it goes. And then both Orion and Achilles will end on the 30th. There will also be a special rate up for the Argonaut CE, which is so fucking good. I, love. I don't think I mentioned it at the beginning, but I love Atlantis. It's one of my favorite Lost Belts. It obviously goes 6, and then Atlantis for me, and then... Um, and this is also based off of NA. Um, I'll see when 7 comes out. I have a feeling 7 might end up being my favorite for biased reasons. Um, but I don't know anything about the story inside of it. I'd have to actually think about it. Maybe after, maybe one of the Road to 7 things I can talk about how I feel about them. But anyway, let's continue on. So, we'll start with the 4s just to mention it. None of these are limited, and this is actually some good banner stuff in general. The only reason you are ever summoning on these banners is for one of two reasons. One, you want Super Orion. Two, um, you care a whole lot about one of these units and you have been specifically saving. If you do not meet the criteria, criteria for either, you should continue saving or waiting for another banner. Um, that's basically it. And the only exception here is people who are potentially interested in Super Orion. So. Um, just to quickly just shoot out the fours, none of them are limited, so I'm not going to go over them just to save some time for me and some mental health things as I'm tired. Um, and it'll go for Super Ryan. But if you care about any of these characters, it's a good way to get medals for them, and it's kind of a pain in the ass to get medals for, um, four stars in general. So it's nice when they're featured. So at least for Australia, she'll be featured on the Super Orion banner, and then for Kiron, he'll be featured on the Odysseus. Australia will be featured again for Orion, and then over here, Chiyome will be on Achilles. So, we'll start with Super Orion, because he's the showstopper, and people will stop watching the video after this, but it's okay. <laughs> Super Orion, he's an archer. He has one quick, one arts, three buster. I wonder what he's good at. Three quick, three arts, one hit on buster. Five hits on extra. Active skills. Stout arm of brutality. That's this big ass man arm that he has right here. B plus increases. What does an A look like? Increases his own buster performance for a single turn. Increases his own damage against the wild beast or demonic enemies for a single turn. 50% um, and 50% for both on a cooldown of 5. His second skill is Pressure of the Moon Goddess EX. Grants self the gut status for one time three turns. Increases his own attack for three turns and then gain crit stars. 3,000 HP heal with 20% to attack and 20 crit stars on a cooldown of 6. His third skill is the Bowman of the 3 stars A+. Increases on critical star absorption for 3 turns. Grants self a buff on attack buff for 3 attacks 3 turns. Increases own critical damage for 1 turn when attacking with buster cards. This activates first. Um, with the absorption is 500% at level one at level 10. If you get him all the way to the final... And the crit damage is also 100% on a cooldown of 5. His passive skills are Independent Action EX, Blessing of the Sea God B, Curse of the Scorpio D, which is a very important Grant Self Toxic Status Demerit, Increase Poison Damage on Self by 20%, which means you are never going to bring him on anything related to Poison because he will get killed. He has an Anti-Archer Attack Damage Aptitude, 
because trust no one, not even yourself. Its noble phantasm is the Artemis Hognos, the Moon Goddess's Innocent Affections, which is a rank B anti-army self-noble phantasm of the arts variety. It increases invincibility for three turns, it increases its own attack for three turns, grants self a debuff immunity for three turns, gain 10 crit stars every turn for three turns. At MP level 1, it's 30%. If you get them all the way to MP level 5, it's 50% attack up. And its overcharge effect is an increased own crit damage for three turns, 100% at level 1. At the final level, it's 200%. And that is Super Orion. So first, um, I'll start by saying I'm biased and say I really love Super Orion. So I will talk about the negatives <laughs> before I go into the positives. But some negatives on him. Obviously, this skill, while it, it, it never comes up, they don't use uh, poison. If you are actually fighting someone who inflicts uh, poison in any kind of way, Super Orion will not be able to live through that. You would have to try so hard to actively get him across the stage to win with this. Um, it's a lot of increase of poison damage. But thankfully, it doesn't come off that often, but it does occasionally come up, like if you're fighting the Scorpions or if you're in Lost Belt 6. It's really more for lore reasons he has this, um, but it is still a demerit and sometimes has to be work around when it pops up. Next, he doesn't really have very many defensive options, like this reduce own damage taken by 175 and this random guts is all he has, really. Uh, next, his biggest stuff usually only lasts for a single turn like this increase to buster performance is only one turn and same thing goes for wild beast or demonic enemies for one turn both only last for one turn his third skill it looks like it would last for three turns but it's three attacks three turns so after you attack with three of your face guards they're gone and if for whatever reason if you're not using busters like if you use an arts card first obviously you don't get it you really badly want to get three buster cards and sometimes that can come down to some unfortunate card rng and that's about it for the negatives i guess this is kind of a negative that will roll into a positive but he's also 100 percent crit focused if you cannot tell if you are not interested in crit units he's not your guy because all he cares about is doing crits and hitting crits and making big crit damage and now I'll roll into his positives. This man's really fucking good at making crit damage. Oh my god, he's one of the most fun units I could use. On BB, I was three turning with him because he was able to do over a million damage on crits alone. And that's with using... I wasn't even using Merlin. I was using Double Vich and Himiko. And that was enough to make his crit damage go crazy. Um... With Vich being able to bring all these skills back for a single outburst of turns and doing all that, he's a lot of fun to use. In Challenge Quest, I love using him as well, as well as the Grail, as well as the Grail fronts. I feel like even though he doesn't have very many defensive options, if you use him in a way that will make him have a little bit more of that, he can be really good. What I mean by that is maybe because I'm someone who doesn't really have Merlin, so the team I usually use him with is himself. Castoria and Himiko and because of the overcharge effect of all the overcharge going around he ends up being able to get usually this active a whole bunch and he's able to get his defense from Castoria and stuff like that the only thing you're really missing out on is obviously you're huge missing out on the buster so it's not optimal for everything if you want maximum damage you should obviously be going either double Vich or a Vich and a Merlin or double Merlin I think on JP gives a lot more crit damage um, but that's all stuff you can work around with. And the, I guess this is also technically a negative, um, but it really kind of depends on the player, I feel like, because I remember talking to a friend who disagreed with this kind of statement, and if you feel the same way, feel free to tell me. For some players, they usually don't go for non-single, either non-single target or non-AOE units because they're harder to farm with, and in Fago, that's a lot of what you're doing. So for or Super Ryan, he's someone who is definitely rises high on the list once you get other people on the list. You know what I mean? Like for a lot of people, they're like, no, go. I go for Castoria. I go for Koyan. I go for Oberon. I get all my basics out of the way. And then I pick up Arjuna or I pick up some Rabuki and then I'm like set. And then now I need someone to really have fun with and start messing with. And that's where the units like Super Ryan pop up where it's a little bit hard to justify, even though they're really good. They're just not on the same level of the units that are typically the best, but they are still insane. It's really hard to say because it's really weird to think about just because I, I do think Super Orion is an insane unit, but when you actually think about what do you do mostly in Fago, 
it's a lot of farming. So I can understand the mindset, but I also had another friend who said like, no, well, Vago has some extremely annoying fights. And those units that can make them easier, he, I think it, I remember him saying basically like, the reason so many people have such issues with a lot of these fights is that they all they get is farm units. And then when it actually comes time to do the story or harder fights, they're like shit out of luck because they focused all on the farm and they didn't focus on the other aspect of the game and for him he ended up focusing on a lot of those units because he made that made his life easier and that anyone could farm at a certain point but again it depends on the player i think it basically comes down to that i'm someone who definitely prefers farming but i also really like having units like this for fun so you're gonna have to look at yourself and see for that. If you're someone who doesn't have any of the big support units like Castoria and um, Oberon and Koyanskaya who are coming up, or S Summer Scotty who is not coming up but will come up eventually, I think it's better to kind of like hold on to your quartz for now, even though I do think Super Orion would be really good for you uh, down the line if you're someone who's interested in like a really crit focused unit. Uh, it's really weird to say. You know, it's always really weird to say. But at the same time, if you also like Orion, I would just suggest getting him. I didn't have Merlin when I got Super Orion. I got him for the love of the game, and I was uh, rewarded for it, and I've loved using him every simple step of the way, even though I don't use what is most people would probably consider the super optimized way of playing with him. I play him with him because I think he's a fun unit. I like seeing big number go up, and I like hitting dudes with three buster crits, and I like them getting, I like dealing 300, 400% combustor crits. And in some cases with Koyan, you can mess around and be able to get even more with the right setup. Because this will, because his cooldowns are pretty low, you can actually get these back pretty easy on turn one or on turn, um, on turn two, which is what I was doing with BB, which is I was using Himiko to hit him on the first one, on the, on the first guy, take care of the first guy. And then all his stuff came back again for the second wave, and I gave him a whole bunch of burst of big buster damage, and I was going to town on it. It was a lot of fun. But anyway, that's Super Orion. I wish you guys the best of luck. I think he is definitely a, wor a unit worth having. It's just whether or not you have the means to go for him is something I can't really answer for you. You have to look at your box, you have to look at your quartz, and you have to look at the units that are upcoming. If you're missing out on a lot of dudes, then you should hold off. Like, for example, Morgan's coming up. And if you're someone who's like, man, I don't like big, beefy men. I want big, beautiful women. Which, in that case, it would be Bar Bargus. But point is, <laughs> Bargus is also upcoming. I want queen women, then that's Morgan. And you're going to be more happier if you have Morgan than if you have Orion. But if you're like me and you're like, nah, man, big, beefy men slapping meat, this is the guy for you. That's Super Orion. Next, well, now we talk about the rest of this odd jobs career. These should go fast. Odysseus, he's a writer. Um, he has two quicks, two arts, one buster. Four on quick, four on arts, three on buster, and five hits extra. His active skills are Insight of the Cunning General, B++, which is an increase to party's quick and arts performance for three turns, and then a 500% chance to draw attention to all enemies to party except one ally by 300% for three turns. 20% 20% and then a cooldown of 6. His second skill is Single Mindedness Love A. Charges on MP gauge, increases on critical star absorption for 1 turn. Grants self charm debuff immunity for 5 turns. 30% to MP, absorption is 100% and the cooldown is 5. His third skill is the Aegis Divine Body Boundary Field A. Grants self invincibility for 1 turn, increases on buff removal resistance for 1 turn, and then increases defense for 3 turns. 100% to buff removal resistance, and the defense up is 30%, and a cooldown of 5. His passive skills are magic resistance B, writing B, protection of the messenger god B, which gives him a immune to pickify and increases arts performance by 10%. Third skill, anti rider attack damage aptitude, because trust no one, not even yourself. Odysseus, for sure, should not be trusting himself. And the man was. The man could have solved a lot of his problems if he was not his own greatest enemy. Um, and then his noble phantasm is the Troyus Hopus, the Colossus Trojan Horse of Obliteration, rank B++. Anti-country <laughs> anti arts, hits three times, it's an AoE, it removes all enemy defensive buffs, deals damage to them, 450% in level 1. If you get him to MP level 5, it's 750%, and then he increases on uh, MP damage for one turn. This activates first, which is important. 30% at charge level 1, and if you get it all the way to the final charge level, it's 70%, and like I said at the beginning, 
he gets his outfits right here but unfortunately there's no outfit for him wearing the helmet with the move window out so if you're looking for that you're gonna have to keep on waiting i like how i did not show the costume there we go <laughs> It was just for my own pleasure, I guess, of watching the costumes. Odysseus is an AOE writer and a very unfortunate one in that he is arts. So there's already, for free to play options, Habitrod exists. For cheaper options, Summer Mo kind of exists as a, as a, summer, as a summer unit and is very good at MP gating and looping. Um, and then Da Vinci exists. <laughs> for five star limiteds and she's excellent one of the best units i've ever had the fun of using on my jp account when i played it um still sad i've never been able to pull her on na but odysseus ends up being in this weird case where if you want to use him for looping purposes there's better options um some of those options can be obviously limited like for example hypertrot isn't really open until you get to lost belt six once you get to lost belt six she's one of the best but hey not everyone is at lost belt six if that was the case we wouldn't be having a damn campaign saying hey catch up please catch up for the love of god um but there's some other writer i think i believe there is anyway let me Quick on the fly guide to look at as I go to we I guess there's also Bakken as well and then if you look at some of the other ones not on here it really isn't that many okay never mind I'll shut I'll shut I'll shut my damn mouth apparently so there are one two three four five options and I think he's the weakest of all of them but that said even though he is the weakest of all of them, he does have some interesting stuff to him, and a lot of it has to do with, I think, this taunt right here, is that taunt is extremely good if you know how to use it and with the right team setups. It might just be because the setup I had with Hijikata showed me the power of taunt, but taunt is really good. There's a reason why there's, only, there's not that many CEs that just give taunt, is because a good taunt unit will save your ass. Like, no joke, it will be a lifesaver if they're used correctly. And thankfully, he's one that does seem to be used for correct purposes. Like, being able to give himself some invincibility, give him some defense. He's able to defend himself just a little bit here. Um, I think he ends up being interesting in that kind of way. If you're looking for a looper, there's better options, and he will do you fine as you're going through it. It's not like I think he's a bad one. He's a perfectly okay one. It's a perfectly good one. It's just that he's not the best of the the others in in the group with him. But yeah, that's Odysseus. Um, if he's for you, he's for you. But he's also not limited, so you, there's always a chance to randomly get him. Um, which is why I've never chased him, even though I'm a big fan of a lot of Greek mythology and also the story of the Odyssey itself. Even though I'm not a big fan of what they did to Odysseus and his story, but that 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 goes for a longer story. Um, as I remember arguing with a friend, if he's a, why is his noble phantasm the horse? He wasn't riding the horse. He was inside the horse. Why wasn't it the boat? And he said, shut up. It makes sense. You ride a boat. You ride a horse. It's a mech horse. It makes all perfect sense. And I just gave up. Anyway, that's Odysseus. Best of luck if you end up going for him. But I really think you should probably hold off. Next is Achilles. Achilles. He is another writer and another AoE one at that. And he has two quicks, two arts, one buster, four hits on that quick, three hits on that arts, two hits on that buster, and four hits on that extra. His active skills are the Dromos Cometes Comet Form A, increases his own quick performance for three turns, and then his crit damage for three turns 30% to quick and 30% to crit damage at level 10, and a cooldown of five. His second skill is the Adrios Amorantos. Amorant or the Brave B grants self invincibility for two attacks, five turns, increases his own defense for three turns, 20%, on a cooldown of five. Third skill is the Dietricon Astorlunki Spear Tip of the Star Traversing the Skies. I'm aware that I said that all terribly. I just didn't even try. 500% chance to draw attention to all enemies to self for 300 by 300% for one turn. Increase own MP generation rate for one turn, and then increase and then charges on MP gauge 30% to MP rate and 30% to MP gauge on a cooldown of six. Uh, 
His passive skills are Magic Resistance C, writing A+, plus and Divinity C. His third skill is an Anti-Archer Attack Damage Aptitude. And his Noble Phantasm, which after his strengthening, is the Troyus Tragodia, the Temp Tempestious Immortal Chariot. Rank A+, plus, Anti-Army, hits five times. It's quick. It deals damage to all enemies. It inflicts confusion status for three times to them. 30% chance to activate the debuff below every turn. When activated, 500% chance to seal their skills for one turn. Um, at MP level 1, it's 800%. And if you get them all the way to the final MP level, it is 1,200. And then his overcharge effects is increased to quick performance for one turn. And then an increase to own critical damage for three turns. And this activates first. 20% to quick... 50% to crit damage, and if you get them all the way to the other charge levels, it's 60% to quick, 100% to crit damage, and of course, he features his own special little summer unit. Not summer unit, his own special little summer outfit. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. I mean, I guess this counts. Where he's like a Pokemon trainer. I remember when this event came out, and everyone was so sure that it was like a Pokemon trainer type event and it was not really it was more just dinosaurs were involved somehow <laughs> which is pretty funny um and yeah that is Achilles Achilles is really good is the long and short of it here um unlike arts I think there are a couple more options if I remember right Taigon Wong is the other one that I would think of of using for uh, AoE purposes, but if there's any more, Astelfo is there, Ishtar, which when she gets her JP buff will probably be a little bit better for us, Bartholomew, mm, Carmela, Marie Antoinette, Alexander, Medusa, and Red Hair. So he's a really good, he's a really good AoE one for sure. Um, he offers a lot of versatility uh, to the team for itself. For example, if you are using them either for, if you're using them for looping, he'll be really good at looping. I know because I've used him in looping before. And in the past, it used to be that maybe this skill will screw you over a little bit. Just because if you use it at the wrong time, your MP generation rate will kind of go bad. But I think with Summer Scotty and the extra attack she gives, it should help him out a little bit uh, in that regard, I think at least. And if you're in a harder fight, which is where you can take really big advantage of this specific move right here, which is his taunt, which I just talked about Odysseus. Our ta a good taunt unit is worth <laughs> is worth having and worth uh, leveling up. Um, the fact that he can give himself invincibility for two attacks over five turns, so if they just miss him, it's similar to the way Ku does it, which is really nice. And if this breaks down, he still increases his own defense, even if it's just a little bit. And it's a low cooldown as well, so he'll be able to get that back pretty decently. And if you're also in a scenario where you're trying to do a lot of crit damage with him, he'll be able to get that up to 30% from the crit damage is really nice. If you are being able to spam this move a whole bunch, you'll be able to really nicely stack up that crit damage to make him be able to do a lot more crits. Unfortunately, the quick performance isn't going to be able to stack up, but that's fine. The only other thing that I can think of as like a slight negative is only one single Buster card, and that's only because I'm thinking of Summer Scotty being able to give 100% to uh, Buster crits, so you'll miss out if you miss out on the single Buster card or something, but it's not that big a deal, I think, for the most part. Um, in that case, you'd probably want to run more regular Scotty, one Summer Scotty and then two other Scotties over Friend or something, if you can find them, that is. Um, so he ends up being just a really solid one, and both him and Tygon, um, are both really good AoE ones. If I was going to use a, because I have both of them, I also have a stealth one, I have all the other units I mentioned, but if I'm ever going to use one of these units, I would use them between Tygon or Achilles. I think post buff, if I need more damage, I'm definitely leaning towards Achilles, where I feel Tygon is much better as a support unit that can occasionally use his Noble Phantasm when needed. His, he really shines as like a really good solid support unit and I feel like Achilles is who you would want to go for if you were actually interested in damage unless you have very high MP levels on your Astolfo or something but anyway that's Achilles and plus I really like Achilles because he's another dude from he's not from the Odyssey he's from the Trojan War but I also like him from there um, and I also liked him in Fate Apocrypha now that I remember 
Uh, I don't usually, I don't bring it up that much just because last time, every time I bring up Fate Apocrypha, I end up accidentally starting, not fights, more like gentle, gentlemen's disagreements, gentlemen slash gentlewomen slash gentle days agree disagreements about the quality of Fate Apocrypha, but I can say for a fact, I really like Achilles, uh, and I think he's cool in that, in that, in the show. I don't know about the books, I didn't read the books, maybe he does some awesome book stuff, I'm not sure. But anyway, that's Achilles, and now for the final unit, which annoyingly is I have to go for here. But it's okay, because she was one of the early. We have regular-ass Orion, aka just Artemis, because even though Orion the bear is the unit, the woman is in charge. <sighs> two quicks, two arts, one buster. Three hits on quick, one hit on arts, one hit on buster, four hits on extra. First skill, Affection of the Goddess EX. Increase on defense for one turn. Increase on attack by 20% for three turns. Increase on def defense, the debuff resistance by 50% for three turns. On a 50% defensive buff and a cooldown of five. Uh, whimsical Bond A+. Plus. Increase no damage against male enemies for one turn. 100% and a cooldown of five. Could you tell that this was an early unit? Eye of the Mind, False B-. minus. Grand Self Evasion for one turn. Increase on critical damage for three turns. If you couldn't tell beforehand... The 34% crit damage you get at level 10 will show you, and cooldown of 6. Her two passive skills is Magic Resistance D and Independent Action A+. And her third skill is an Anti-Archer Attack Damage Aptitude, because get your ass in gear, Orion. Lock in. And her Noble Phantasm is the Tri-Star Amor Mio, the Moon Goddess's Arrows of Love and Romance. Rank A+, Anti-Unit, hits 5 times, it's Arts, it deals damage to 1 enemy, reduces their attack by 20% for 3 turns, reduces their MB gauge by 1, the damage is 1200 at level 1, it's 18,000 at level 5, and if you, <laughs> the overcharge is reducing their critical attack chance for 3 turns, 20% to crit damage, 60% to, uh, if you get it all the way to the final charge level, and that is regular old Orion. Uh, this is an old unit that has not received many buffs on their skills, and that's kind of a bummer, <laughs> because I think that um, they really need it now. They kind of, if you can see here, they don't really have that many like damage giving buffs. They get like 20% attack, and some crit damage was his oak, which is okay. But a lot of their damage is tied to the enemy being male, and this lasting for a single turn. Um, and for that single turn, you're gonna do a lot of damage. But after that, you're not going to be doing very much damage, unfortunately. Um, unless they are also Archer or something, and you can figure it out from there. Um, at least you can stall for time just a little bit with their Noble Phantasm, their ability to lower down the MP gauge, the ability to give yourself 50% defense, even though it only lasts for a single turn, which is unfortunate. It's Again, this is a very old unit, and for the most part, they really need a lot of buffs to make them... Not uh, make them more in line for what we expect from a five star of today. Because right now their kit doesn't really do it. I think their noble phantasm is all right. I think that can a lot of this is really nice, and some of their skills have like the makings of being good. But this needs buffed to either last three turns or to give more stuff. This needs to be buffed <laughs> so that it's not a random ass thirty four percent crit damage. Or maybe more evasion, who knows, maybe add some more stuff. And this definitely needs to be buffed to either give more the defense to last longer or for the attack to be higher or something like that. Like, even the debuff resistance rate isn't 100%. It's 50%. That means your debuffs can still be removed. <laughs> it's not a very good skill. But I really do like the look of Orion and especially Artemis. I love Artemis' design for various reasons. Uh... I also like that Orion is also giving a show here. Bear. Big bear. But anyway, that's his unit. You would only really want him to go against the males or you really like the look of Artemis, and that's basically it. Otherwise, they're not worth summoning for unless you're a huge fan of them. I wish I had Orion. Because <laughs> I like uh, Orion and I love Artemis. They're one of the reasons why I love this uh, Lost Belt so much. One of the many reasons. But anyway... That's it for banners, everyone. I should hopefully still be able to release a couple more videos just because I actually do own a couple of these dudes, such as Super Ryan and Achilles. And maybe I'll actually get with my brother and actually see if we can... I haven't actually done any of the Super Recollection quests because usually for me, doing the story node once is enough for me and I never do them again. But if I can record it for a video, maybe I can get see if me and my brother can beat them or something using some kind of jank team as we do. But yeah. 
enjoy the grind up. You need to get this. You need to get going because you need to have cleared Olympus if you want to participate in one of the upcoming events, which is coming in October, which I can show right here because they've already said like, hey, the reason you have to gear up for this is because you have to get ready for uh, Halloween 2022, which will require you to have cleared Olympus. And not only that, the other event in November, it doesn't require you. You get access to it if for the to the free quest and exhibition quest if you cleared Fuyuki. But if you actually want access to the main quest, you have to have cleared Avalon Le Fay, which is Lost Belt 6. And Lost Belt 6 is really fucking long. It's... <laughs> It's insanely wrong. There's a lot of story to read. There's a lot of stuff to go for. There's like three parts, so get going. That's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I'll see you guys in the next one. You guys have a best of time. Uh, feel free to tell me anything you want to say about who you're looking forward to, any of the stuff I mentioned. Hell, if you want to talk about Dustmore, I'll also talk about Dustmore. I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed. Not. I'm not going to go to bed. I'm going to edit this and then maybe play Final Fantasy 16 or something because I'm already done with the event. Until next time, everyone, you guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.